My mother and I finally found the perfect kitten. She was sitting in a cage in one of the many pet coves we visited. Next slide, please. Her name at the time was Tika. However, my family and I had decided years previously that our next cat was going to be named Cancel Island. The process of getting her was made very easy by a foundation called Cats Bridge to Rescue. It is a nonprofit, no kill cat shelter. It takes care of cats and helps them to find their forever home. <laughs> we decided that she was the one, and they let us take her home that very day. Next slide, please. For my senior project, I decided to combine my love of cats with my love of stop motion. Stop motion is a method of animation that deals with physically manipulating objects to make them appear as if they are moving on their own. This is achieved by moving the objects in small amounts and then taking pictures of them. Next slide. Each picture will represent an individual frame in the animation. By playing the frames together, it creates an effect of blind movement. Next slide. There have been many successful stop motion films. Stop motion has been a part of the film industry since its beginning. If you watch older movies, you can see stop motion used in a similar way that CGI is used today. It was their way of doing special effects. Instead of simply putting the frames together, they could cut out the frame from the actual real film and then just tape back together. Next slide. As a kid, my favorite movie was Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. At the time, I didn't know that it was stop motion or what it really was, but I did know that it was different from everything else I was watching, and it was pretty crazy. Tim Burton's style has had a big effect on me throughout my life. Next slide. Although only two of his films feature stop animation, Wes Anderson has had a great influence on me. The way he approaches his films is similar to the concept used in stop motion. Every prop in Anderson's film is placed there very purposefully. Imagine you're a film director and for your next scene, you have to have a chair in it. For a normal movie, you could just go to a prop house or store and find a chair and say, yeah, that one will work. But with stop motion, you have to carefully think through what kind of chair you want, and then it has to be handcrafted to scale. So everything you see in these movies is very thought out. Anderson goes above and beyond with these sorts of details. He uses color to emphasize things in a way that is both subtle and obvious at the same time. Oh, slide. Next slide. <coughs> Often the details he adds are so subtle that unless you're already aware of them, you won't notice. Next slide. An example of this would be in his stop motion film, The Fantastic Mr. Fox which is based off of the children's novel, Fantastic Mr. Fox, by Roald Dahl. Anderson bases a lot of the scenes off of aspects of Roald Dahl's real home. In one scene, you can see Mr. Fox's desk, and on his desk is placed miniature replicas of similar items that were on Dahl's own desk. The fact that Anderson takes the time to add details like the tiny tinfoil balls from chocolate wrappers that Dahl had on his desk is something I think that makes his movies amazing. It brings the story back to its origin in a way that isn't obvious. It is things like this that inspired me with my senior project. Of course, my short film is on a much smaller scale and doesn't have the same amount of detail or significance, but I hope that perhaps one day I can be a part of a production like The Fantastic Mr. Fox. Next slide. Another thing that I looked at during my project was the difference between stop animation used in claymation versus armature. From the research that I did, I figured out that claymation is just solid clay figures that you can move in any way you want, whereas an armature is a wired base figure that allows for specific movement. Professional armatures have ball and socket joints that move smoothly and very realistically. 
due to time and money. Also, I realized the clip that I wanted to make didn't need an armature. And I think for the most part this was a good decision, aside from the fact that when I moved my figures, the legs fell off occasionally. <laughs> However, for the style of stop motion I was using, having the figures just sort of shuffle around without a lot of leg movement worked. <laughs> Next slide. My project was a stretch for me because I've never attempted stop motion before. So learning how to do it was a challenge for me. I encountered some difficulties with technology, lighting, and at times motivation. My original project was simply going to be building stop motion sets and not actually making a film. However, this was something that I've already done in the past and it just didn't hold my interest anymore. So I sort of stagnated with my project for a decent amount of time until one of my classmates suggested that I combine my project with my love of cats. Immediately, I thought of the Cats Bridge to Rescue and I decided I would make a stop motion clip for them to feature on their website or Facebook page that would help promote adoption. Next slide. Also, I decided to actually help the cats. I would hold a dress down day for both the boys and girls' school. This is a day where the students, after making a donation, are allowed to wear normal clothes or not the uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> In total, I raised $224 for the cats. Once I decided to help the cats, I suddenly found myself motivated and inspired with my project. The idea of my story clip came from my cat, Pantalina. I imagined her sitting in her cage, waiting for someone to come adopt her, bored out of her mind. Overall, I'm very happy with my project. I learned a great deal about stop motion and made great contacts with people in the film industry. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy my video. was how many hours did it take to make that short film, um, including making the structure and painting it and the time it took to sculpt the cat to exactly what I wanted it. It was 20 plus hours, I'd say. 
Just the filming alone was at least five. And how many um, shots is it? Um, it's 10,045. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> who was my mentor. My mentor was Megan Frazier. Um, she, I've known her for a long time and she was very helpful with her organizational skills and also the fact that she didn't know anything about my topic was kind of fun <laughs> and helpful that I had to go through and explain out everything and what I was talking about. Especially encourage you all to, if you haven't already, check out Celeste's poster because it's extraordinarily relevant and 